what happened was that they, they said, well, we hate it, you know, this is such, a, such good material. Uh, and Warners had just acquired HBO. And they said, um, can you cut it down for television? So I went through a situation where I'd written a three-hour script, and uh, Oliver had uh, asked me to expand it. And I said, well, it's three hours already. And he said, it's OK, I, that's what I do. I do. It's, it's not, you know, leave me to worry about that. So it was a three and a half hour script. And they wanted me to, to make it into a 90 minute television script. So I declined. And uh, uh, a writer called Ron Hutchinson came in and did actually a really, really good job of um, scaling it down for TV. Um, at which point they assigned it to a director who said, this, I didn't realize it, I'm going to rewrite it. So in the eight weeks remaining between him having clapped eyes on the script and starting to shoot it, uh, he completely rewrote the script. And uh, the, the purpose of the script in the first place, the, the, really the absolute purpose of it when I first wrote it, uh, the first conversation I had with Warner Brothers was to say, I don't want to make it, uh, I mean, the, tr the problem with Vietnam films is they all eventually blame the Vietnamese. And I'm afraid we can't, you know, that's not viable anymore. We, we know it wasn't their fault. We have to sort of own up to the fact that it was <coughs> what the Americans were at fault. They said, yes, yes, I, I guess you're right, yes, yes. So I said, well, I really just want to make a film that doesn't blame the Vietnamese. Anyway, out it went on the TV. They had to do lots of last minute scrambling. They had to change the names of the characters because people were threatened to sue because it changed all the plot and everything. Invented things. And uh, I said, uh, my final conversation was with, with them was after I'd seen it, I said, I thought, we were gonna, I thought you, your intention was to make a film that didn't blame the Vietnamese. They said, yes, this what we, 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 yeah, absolutely. But, it, but the film only blamed the South Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first one. Uh, a couple of years later, I was hired to <clears throat> write a screenplay based on a, a wonderful novel by Edith Wharton called The Custom of the Country. Uh, I absolutely love this book. Um, it was Eve Ward's, it's not Eve Ward's best known book. It was published in 1912, and it was an absolute runaway bestseller. It was by far the most popular book. And it's much less somber than many of her books. It's, it's a kind of social satire. It's about a young woman who comes to New York at the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century. Beautiful young woman determined to make her way in society. So it's like a vanity fair plot. And she proceeds to cut a sway through um, New York society and eventually European society and disposes along the way of three husbands uh, and making herself richer and richer. Um, and eventually finds herself in a rather desolate spot married to a billionaire. Uh, and it was a story about how oh, you know, the moment when America decided that they weren't going to try and ape Europe anymore, but they were going to be the superpower. They, were, they understood that they had to, you know, they didn't have to worry about what everybody thought they were there. They could be themselves and do what they liked. Um, and it's a very, very witty book. And, uh, and uh, I had thought of it rather in the line of David's liaison. Um, I thought that, you know, audiences always enjoy watching people behave very badly. Um, and so it was written for Michelle Pfeiffer uh, at the time. Um, and again, everything went uh, very smoothly um, until uh, at a certain moment when Michelle rang up and said that she had been 
offer a film on the age of innocence, also based on the book by uh, Ethan, directed by Marcus Scorsese. I said, oh God, that means you're not going to do what you want to do ours. She said, no, no, they're completely different characters, so, you know, we can do both, you know, I can do both of them. But anyway, the school says he is ready to go, and I can't, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure most of many of you have seen The Age of Innocence, which is a um, spectacular film, but uh, very, very well thought out, and um, just a, a, a marvelous film about the resurrects an entire society. Um, but the film is incredibly expensive and uh, not particularly well received. So it kind of fell through the floor commercially, uh, which which caused everybody to think, well, he did warn mm -hmm. um, So they cancelled the film. They cancelled the custom of the country. Um, a few months later, Sense and Sensibility came out for the studio. It was the most enormous success, and they called me out and said, all these period movies, you know, perhaps they, 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 they don't do, you know, some of them did quite well, so the whole thing process began again, and we were getting geared up to do it again, this time with it in my phone. And then the portrait of a lady came out. <laughs> uh, and uh, somehow they felt it didn't do it, well, it didn't, you know, make its money back and so on. Uh, and the merry-go-round stopped and we all fell off. And so that was, and that was, these two scripts I'm telling you about really, I feel they were the two of the, two of the best scripts I ever, I ever wrote, really. 